come from near, they come from far. They come from here, they come from thar. To get a blessing, to hear from God. To see Brother Danny and to watch Todd. To see some saved and some get right. It's, it's a giant, giant spring youth rally at Shining Light. We're we going to sing you a song now. Youth Rally is a place to be. Preaching, singing is the life for me. Kids spreading out so far and wide. Keep your lips, just give me that shining light. Welcome. All right. All right. Let's go. All right. Let's all stand and sing. Everybody standing and singing. You don't need a song book. Let's all stand and well, all right, it's cooling off in here now. Look, after you get wet, it, it's not that bad. Not that bad at all. Now, we've been working for this meeting for a whole year. And there are people here from Maryland, Ohio, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, Georgia. I don't know where all from. And boy, we sure are glad you're here tonight. And... These are the Shining Light Cup Girls, and they're going to do you a little song uh, with these cups. See, down here, you know, in the mountains, we don't have modern conveniences, and they just have to play with cups and sticks and dogs and stuff out in the yard. So I hope you can hear them. Give them all the volume you can, fellas. And they're going to do you a little song here. Ready? Here they are, Shining Light Cup Girls. Give him a big hand now. Put your cups up and go that way. What a blessing. You know where you learn how to do stuff like that? Prison. You got, you got to get them, you know, making bill folds and stuff. And they just got out. What a blessing. Amen. Get these tables for me, fellas. It's not everybody want him to do it again. So what he's going to do now, he goes to our church and he's going to tell you all the books in the Bible. Somebody tell me how many books are in the Bible? How many is in the Old Testament? What's wrong with y'all folks? You have, how many's ever read the whole Bible all the way through? Raise your hand, please. Every word of it. Now, the rest of you people ought to be ashamed of yourself. The greatest book in the world and you ain't even read it. And you're one of these people that has doubts about part of it, I bet you. And never even read it. How you, one man told me, he said, well, I don't understand it. If you wait to understand it before you can read it, you'll never do it. Right? So you listen. Dylan's going to tell you all the books in the Bible, okay? Go ahead. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Jose, Joel, Amos, Odi, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, Revelation. Yeah. 
All right. But that's, that's not all he can do. That's not all he can do. Uh, how many chapters are in Job? Forty-two. How many chapters are in Job? Forty-two. How many chapters are in um, Mark? Sixteen. How many chapters are in Acts? Twenty-eight. How many chapters are in Leviticus? Twenty-seven. How many chapters are in Ezra? Fourteen. How many chapters are in Ruth? Four. How many chapters are in Job? I didn't ask you that, didn't I? How many chapters in, uh, oh, I don't know, First Corinthians? Um, 16. That's right. That's right. How about, I know a good one, 2 Chronicles. 36. That's right. 1 Chronicles. Uh, I don't know. He's never missed one yet. Anybody know who's, how many's in 1 Chronicles? <laughs> Not a soul in here knows. Y'all, hush, you don't know how many's in there. There ain't no such a book. How many's in Hezekiah? There's no such a book as Hezekiah. And that's your, we, in America, we've become Bible illiterate. Used to, people had a family Bible and families read the Bible. Yeah. We don't know the Bible and he can't live by it if you don't know what it says. But he did a great job. Let's give him a big hand. Amen. <laughs> The, ser the service tonight, all this whole service tonight, we're going to do a complete opposite of what we did last night. Everybody in this building in a hundred years from right now will be in heaven or hell. If you lived 80 or 90, which most of you will never make it, I got two more years and I'll be there. But if you live to be 80 or 90, you're living a short time compared to forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. 
I'm going to tell you something, people. There's more to it than just what you've got in this world. Everybody here is going to die and leave everything you've got. And tonight, we're talking about heaven. Everybody ought to want to go to heaven. That's what this song's about. Hey, man, I want to know how it feels, don't you? I want to know how it feels to walk down gold streets and all of that stuff. Hey, man, my mom and daddy told me about it when I was little, and I'm going to find out one of these days what it feels like. Hey, man, go ahead. tonight. It's more real than that concrete you're sitting on this evening. It's a real place with real streets, real gold. It's not going to float around playing on harps, on cloud like a little cream puff or something. It's real. You can walk. It's tangible. You can touch it. You can sit down in it. How many of you got somebody you know already in heaven tonight? What about that? Let's sing there's coming a day. There is coming a day when no heartaches will come. I've had a few, ain't you? Uh, have you ever had your heart broke? You ever been in the hospital? You ever suffered? You ever been through troubles and trials? Buddy, I'm telling you something. When we get there, all that stuff's over with. Let's sing it, girls. Hey, man, we ought to rejoice tonight. We're not only going to miss hell, we're going to get to go to heaven. Hey, man.
going to happen. The night you got saved, your destiny was fixed. Fixed. And nothing can change that. He predestinated you that moment to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. He may have to beat you to death to get you there, but he's going to get you through. Some of you might go zigzagging off the planets on your way up, bing, bing, like that. But you're going, brother. If you're saved by the grace of God, you're going. Hey, man, let me say it's good to be here. Amen. And it's good to be saved. Hey, man, I remember a time in my life on a Saturday night, I wasn't I wasn't in church. Hey, man, I was out in the world. I'm glad ever since I've been saved, God has always provided, supplied my needs. Hey, man, I ain't had to want to go back to those places because ain't nothing out there to go back to. Hey, man. And so it's just a joy to be here. We appreciate Brother Danny asking us to come. Amen. And I tell you, our pastor was going to come with us. And I tell you what, you know what? We love our pastor. Amen. Well, it got quiet on that one. I said we love our pastor. Amen. Amen. And, and, and we support him. And listen, I'm not the pastor. I'm the youth pastor. Amen. And, and I know my role at church. I know he's the pastor. And I listen to him. Oh, I'm going to kill this service before it gets started. Amen. But... But listen, I follow him because he's the leader. Amen? So I, but I wish he was here tonight so he couldn't come. His son got hurt right before we came. was leaving tonight. So you pray for them. He, he, as far as I know, he's okay. But just pray God will touch him. Amen? And we're going to sing a song tonight so much to thank him for. And I tell you, folks, i got so much to thank God for. Amen? First of all, I'm not going to hell tonight. Amen? And you know, some people are not sure about that. But February the 19th, 1984, on a Sunday night about 8.30, in an old-fashioned church, amen, I found out I could go to heaven. I accepted Jesus as my Savior, amen. And I've been serving Him ever since. Amen. I ain't going to say I've been perfect, but thank God, amen, I've been saved. Amen. amen. So you pray for us tonight as we sing so much to thank Him for.
Amen. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not going to hell tonight. Amen. I hope you're not. But if you are, amen, you can fix that before you leave. Amen. All right. We got something special here for you tonight. Amen. And hope you'll pray for us. Amen. Amen. Our pastor, I, let me say something about our pastor right quick. He's, he's, got a, he's, got a, he's got a burden for bus ministry. Now, when I went to Bright Light Baptist Church, I knew nothing about a bus ministry. I, I, I didn't want to be a part of it because every Saturday morning you had to be there at 10 o'clock and go out soul winning. Knock on doors all day. I didn't want no part of that. I want to stay home and lay in the bed. Amen. I didn't want to get up and do that. But, but then the pastor come to me and said something about being a youth pastor. And he said, one of your, one of your duties as youth pastor, you're going to have to go visit at 10 o'clock. Well, I knew nothing about that. Amen. I'm going to be honest with you. Been saved 14 years at that time. I knew nothing about soul winning. That's a shame, ain't it? I knew nothing about it. He said, well, you're going to go with me. I went out, man, the first week we went out, the first Saturday, every door we knocked on, people would slam the doors and cuss you, and I thought, man, this ain't worth it. I ain't going back out there. So the next week I went, me and another man went on our own, knocked on the door. A young lady came to the door, opened the door. Man, I was, my knees was knocking. I was scared to death. I just handed her a gospel track. She looked at that track. She said, you know, I was laying on the bed. This cop of ain't word to commit suicide or not and said, you knocked on my door. She said, I want to give my heart to Jesus. What about that? Amen. I said, boy, amen. You know what? I didn't care. I got cussed out the rest of the day. It didn't bother me. Amen. Boy, I was just shouting running down the road. Amen. Thank God I was one. Amen. That wasn't going to hell. Amen. Because somebody went out and cared. Amen. Just one. Amen. I remember when I came to Bright Light, we had one van. You know, now we got seven buses, amen? They run every Sunday, folks. Amen. Thousands of dollars a month spent on buses. But you know what? It's worth it on Sunday morning. When you stand there in the church and some little kid walks in, ain't dressed like you dressed, snotty nose, amen, their hair might not be combed, might not be able to take a bath that day. But boy, they in church, amen? And boy, they'll come up and they'll put them little arms around you and say, I love you, amen? I, to me, that's worth it all, Amen. I could care less what people think. Amen. Boy, that's a joy. I line up at the door every Sunday morning. I'm right there at that door when they get off them bus. I want to be there. Amen. Amen. I want to be there to greet them and welcome them in. Matter of fact, I think we got 31 that rode the bus here with us tonight. Bus children, 31 of them sitting back there tonight that rode the bus with us. Amen. Our pastor got this laid on his heart here while back to do this. And somebody might have said, listen, folks, if you don't have a, if you don't have a, a burden for the bus ministry. I hope this will help you right here. This is some of the people that's been won to the Lord through the bus ministry. Our, our, through our pastor's bus ministry and then through the bright light. Amen. And so you pray for us. You know, we're going to sing this song, People Needs the Lord. Boy, people needs the Lord. Amen. So you pray for us tonight. Go out soul winning. Want his whole family to the Lord. Riding a bicycle. Amen. Just stopped at their house and knocked on the door. There they are. Amen. That's what God used. 
Jesus. Amen. Bring them to church. She got saved. Amen. What about that? sing and say amen. We have a bus ministry. We challenge you tonight. Go on. One, one man said, if we do that at our church, some of the old people leave. Well, that might be the best thing could ever happen. Some of them that's been in the way for 40 years ought to get out of the way. Let somebody do something for God. If they don't believe in it, something's wrong. You know what the Lord's interested in? He's interested in them kids. He's interested in boys and girls. The Bright Light Baptist Church has a tremendous bus ministry. Tremendous. They're doing a good job. All right. Now, we're going to have fun here tonight. Let's see how quiet you can be. Yeah, man. Crowd tonight. He's the old country preacher. 
Amen. I hear there's going to be some celebrities in the house tonight. So I thought I'd fly by and be a witness for the Lord. I fear no man. I fear no evil. I've been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, able to leap small demons in a single bound. This looks like a job for Super Christian. Bouncing California, let all y'all come by. We got more bouncing California, we like to party all the time. We got more bouncing California, where the hustlers all reside. We got more bouncing California, rolling easy when we ride. Well, excuse me for a while, but it's time to propagate. I'm coming from the land where the seasons never change. Good evening, Hollywood! We're here on the Sunset Strip, the home of champagne wishes and caviar dreams. We're on the Sunset Strip tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen! And, and whoever you are and whatever you are, back up. Are you glad to be back on Hollywood Strip? We're here tonight for Celebrity Uncensored, and you're going to see some great stars of today. Look at there. There comes Ashton Kutcher. Ashton! I'm Ashton Kutcher. Woo! You just got punk. Yeah! Woo! Ashton, good to have you tonight, son. Yes, sir. Good to Back up, boy. That's for Sunday at 11 o'clock. Get out of here. All right. Hey, hey, here is the rookie. Uh, no, not the rookie of the year. Yes, sir. Ray, the rookie of the year. MBA, the million dollar kid from the Cleveland Cavaliers. There comes LeBron James. LeBron's in the house. Hey. From the courtroom to the basketball court, here comes Kobe Bryant. Hey guys, I am one of your biggest fans. Uh, can I get your autograph? I mean, I mean, uh, can I read you some scripture in the Bible just to let you know? You know, I just want to be a witness to you guys. Get away from me, man. I don't need that. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, look, I, I, I'm just trying to spread the word. I didn't mean to offend you guys, man. Oh, Lord, get that. Go on back to North Carolina where you come from. Go on. Hey, hey we're down here at the clubs on, on Celebrity Strip, Sunset Boulevard. And here comes Mary Kate and Ashley, the Olsen twins. Here they are. <laughs> I know I can witness to these girls. I bet not. Hey, girls. Can I tell you all about Jesus and what, what? he did? What are you I, doing? Get away I from just... us, you freak. Yeah, before we call the cops, we have everything we need. And more. But, but I was, I just. Son, why you're eating fried chicken on Sunday, them girls eating caviar, boy. I'm telling you, this heaven on earth, they don't need you or that. They got, they got everything they need, man. They don't need you. Back off, son. That's for Sunday. That's for Sunday. We'll do that tomorrow. This Saturday night, man, we're going to party like it's 2004, brother. We're going to party tonight. Hey, here comes America's Sweethearts tonight. Oh, they got a show on MTV. Jessica, Jessica Simpson and Nicholas Shea. It is an honor to meet you guys. It I is. just love your show. It is. You know, being you guys, it must be heaven on earth. Heaven? Yeah, I'm going to heaven. They have fish that taste like chicken and buffaloes with wings. Oh, boy, she's a smart one, ain't she? Yes, sir. Ray. Good to see y'all tonight on Celebrity Boulevard. All right. Hey, here comes Beyonce. Give it up. Beyonce's in the house.
Amen. This is too good to be true. This is heaven on earth, man. This is heaven. These guys have got everything. Here comes the princess of pop. She's on Celebrity Boulevard tonight, and you get to see her firsthand. Here comes Britney Spears. Britney's in the house. Britney's in the house. Britney's in the house. Hey, what's up, Doc? Well, I'm doing okay, but I, I'm trying to be a witness for the Lord. Oh, but... no, no, no. See, I used to be into that Baptist stuff, but now I'm into myself because that's what it's all about. You, you mean that... There's other ways to live out there? You bet your Bible belt there is, buddy. Back up, son. This is for Sunday morning. These kids has got heaven on earth, man. They don't need nothing you got. Hey, y'all got heaven on earth, now, don't you, boy? Yes, sir. Hey. hey, they just told me that Usher's in the house. Where's Usher at? Where's Usher at? Usher! Man, is it good to be me or what? Now you understand it's heaven on earth, man. They don't need nothing else. They got it all here. Here is one of my favorites coming up now from the Playboy Palace with the Palace Purdies. I'm talking about Hugh Hefner and his baby dog. Come on this way, ladies. Let Mr. Hollywood help y'all in the house. Good evening, man. Mr. Hefner, good to meet you finally. Finally, good to meet you. Hey, good to see him. And the Purdy's my so good to see Mr. Hefner tonight, ain't he? Yes, it is. Boy, you're you're just like a god to them girls. They do everything you ask them to, and you put them up in that big mansion. Whoa, heaven on earth, guys. There's Hugh Hefner and these Purdy's. Yes, sir. Oh, my. Yes, sir, buddy. Got my little Hefner with me. Yeah, I got you. Look out now. Have me careful there, Hugh. I think you're getting a little old there, boy. Be careful. Well, what about you having there in these purdies? Boy, ain't that something? Right down here on Hollywood Boulevard, the strip, I'm talking about heaven on earth tonight. I just heard somebody else is here. Y'all want to know who it is? I just heard Paris Hilton is here. Coming down the strip right now. Miss Hilton, you look just like a million bucks. Miss Hilton, good to see you tonight. Good to have you. There you go. Hello, boy. You look good in that Superman outfit. <laughs> Well, thank you, Miss Hilton. <laughs> you sure are pretty. I know. And rich. And beautiful. And my daddy owns the Hilton Hotels. Did I mention I was beautiful? So cool. Get down on your knees. Get back up. <laughs> it works every time. He's so easy. Let's party! Woo! You know, you, know, you guys made me realize I've been missing a lot. You know, this must be heaven. Yes, sir. Heaven on earth, kids. Yes. Oh, slide aside. Power of God's here. You don't need to mess with the power of God. Paris Hilton, some of these days, girls, you're going to be, you're going to be sorry that you've tried to mess with all these Christian young men. Now, y'all go on. Get out of here. Go on. Take your pimp daddy with you and go on. Tommy, super Christian. Buddy, 
I sure am disappointed in you. Well, that crowd, that crowd just about had you, buddy. They just about had you right where they wanted you. What happened? I don't know, preacher. I, I thought I could witness. I thought I could face this tough crowd, but I guess I'm just not as strong as I thought I was. But ha have you been reading your Bible? No. Have you been praying? No. Well, there you go, buddy. There you go. You got to realize that this world is way too wicked for us to try to make it in ourselves. Without the power of God in our life, we'll all get ruined. We'll all get taken by this world. I will. You will. Brother Danny will. Anybody in this house will. Hey, young people, y'all listen to me tonight. Y'all listen to me. There's not one person in this building that's strong enough to overtake this world. This world is way too wicked, way too powerful for us to handle it on our own. i tell you what we ought to do. Let's all just get prayed up. Let's go to youth rally so that we can get fired up for God. Go back to our churches and be a blessing. Y'all with me? Let's go. And now the old country preacher travels on from church to church, town to town, and state Amen. to state, preaching the word of God as it yeah. is to men Let's as they the are. Man, the old country preacher. Man, somebody kicked the flutes over there. What? Now look, you hear me tonight? What you got through seeing tonight is the tip of the iceberg. What this world's in, the mess this world's in. You can't even say it or show it in front of it. It's so wicked. But I'm telling you, there's one tonight that's stronger than this world. And there's a place better than this that we're going to when we leave. One more thing, then I'm going to preach you a short message tonight. We're going to go. So here tonight, where will you be in a hundred years? Not going to be here. Unless we're reigning in glory in the millennium. But technically speaking, we're, none of us will be in this world as it is now. Everybody in this building tonight will one day be in heaven or hell. Doesn't matter what you believe. That's what Jesus said. Somebody said, well, I, my opinion, that's just what it is, your opinion. And I'm going by a book tonight that was written before your great-grandmother was born and has never been proven wrong one time. I'm going by what it said. It's not my opinion. Opinions like armpits. Everybody got two and they both stink. And so our opinions don't count. It's what God said that matters. Tonight, is there such a place as a real Is there such a place? Let's think about that for a few minutes tonight. This is an unusual service. You've probably never been in a service like this tonight. I am. And uh, I'm praying. We have prayed for a whole year. Our church has fasted and prayed. That God would get on your heart tonight and make heaven real to you. The older I get, the more I realize that what's down here don't really matter. But what's up there is what we're going to keep forever. And somebody put it, we give up what we cannot keep to gain what we cannot lose. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul wrote by the Holy Spirit. In verse 4, for we that are in this tabernacle, talking about his body, do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon it. That mortality might be swallowed up of life. That verse is saying, Paul was saying, I really desire a better place to live than what I've got now. Heaven. Heaven. Are you going to heaven tonight? Everyone's going to heaven or hell. You might be like the old lady one time. Uh, a skeptic daughter, and she said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to do this. When I get to heaven, I'm going to do that. And a skeptic daughter, he said, you believe all that stuff in that Bible? And she said, yes, sir, I sure do. I believe every word of it. And the man said, now, like, come on, man, you don't believe all them crazy stories about that fish and the whale swallowing Jonah and stuff like that. She said, yes, sir, I absolutely do. And I believe the, the whale swallowed Jonah. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask him about it. She, he said, well, what if he ain't in heaven? She said, well, you can ask him then. Yeah. Yeah. And what she was saying is, if you're not going to heaven, you're going to hell. Right. There's no such place as purgatory. Right. I'll give you $1,000 if you can show me purgatory in 
this Bible. There's no such place. There's heaven. There's hell. There's up. There's down. There's in. There's out. There's no in between. There's positive. There's negative. Thank God there is a heaven. The old saying is to that, he's so heavenly minded that he's no earthly good. No, most people I know are in no danger of that whatsoever. Most Christians tonight are so earthly minded, they are no heavenly good. I know there's a heaven tonight because the Lord put something in my heart when I was 18 years old. Anybody who knows me knows that something happened to me when I was 18. I'm the least of God's children, don't claim to be much. I, I'm, the, I'm the sorriest Christian God's God. But I'm going to tell you one thing here this evening, brother. God done something for me when I was 18 and put something in there that was not there before and never has left since. I'm like that little boy that said once a while, he said, well, he's out flying a kite one day, holding a string. And this fellow came up and said, what you doing, son? He said, I'm flying a kite. That thing doesn't go and pull him outside, up in the clouds. He said, you're flying a kite. He said, that's right. He said, I don't see it. He said, well, it's up there. And he said, how do you know it's still up there? He said, because every once in a while, I feel it tug. And I'm going to tell you something this, this evening. Every once in a while, you feel some kind of just tug on you, don't you? Don't you from another world, from the, from, the, from the heavenly world, you feel something tugging. Amen. Your Bible said, set your affection on things above. In the Bible, there are three heavens. You understand? Three heavens in the Bible. The first heaven, you see it right out here in the daytime. It's where the birds fly. The Bible calls that heaven. Birds fly around it. You see it in the day. The second heaven, you can walk right out there and see it in the night. You see the stars and the planet. That's called heaven in the Bible. The first heaven, you see by day. The second heaven, you see by night. The third heaven, you see by faith. And the Bible said, the old song said, there's a land that is found in day. And by faith, we can see it afar. The third heaven is up under where God lives this evening. I'm going to talk about heaven just for a few minutes tonight. Now remember, you're going to be there one day, so you might as well learn. When these people were up here a while ago, and that boy was jumping around, I, I saw some of your faces, and some of your people looked like, oh my goodness, what is it? Oh no, we're in one of them weird churches. I mean, he's probably going to bring a snake out of the pulpit in a minute. I mean, something terrible. He's going to... He said, I got on the big hand suit, you know. I'm going to start knocking them in the hand, knocking them in the floor. No, no, there's a big difference. There's a big difference. Nobody falls on their back in the Bible. Nobody falls on their back in the Bible. That's worshiping the Lord. There's a Bible, the Bible said when Jesus healed a man, he went walking and leaping and praising God. So when that young man was praising the Lord here a while ago, he was right in order according to what that Bible said. For some of you folks, I say you believe that you come to church and sit like a wooden Indian and go to the ball game, scream like a Manchin Indian. That's what you believe. You believe you're not supposed to be emotional about church, but you're supposed, supposed to be emotional about a motorcycle or a ball game or a religion. I see them. I see them game shows on TV. You know, when this guy come out, he'll pull out a card and he'll say, uh, All right, our next contestant, Susie Q, come on down. And boy, when he does that, Susie Q sitting about right back here somewhere in the crowd. She got on a big old stupid looking sweatshirt, big mouse ears, and you see them, and you see them, and she does like this. She's sitting in here like this, and all of a sudden she goes, You ever seen that? Say amen. You don't think there's one thing wrong with that, do you? You just sit there like you got good sense. Say, that little dog, I'm going to leave her. You don't sit there and say, that's too emotional. She's a cult. You're the weirdo, man. She ought to jump. She ain't won nothing yet. She's going to get some luggage, you know, or a trip to Hawaii or something like that. I mean, if she won't jump up and down, that's fine with me. But don't you criticize me tonight for raising my hand.
The Bible said there's a hell. Fifty-three times there's a hell. I'm not going to hell. I have every right. You know, you'll see little Johnny. And little Johnny's only in the seventh grade. But little Johnny's hit the bat. And when little Johnny gets the bat, you're a hell. I know how you mamas are. You wouldn't miss one of Johnny's games for love or money. And that's all right. I ain't against that. I jump up down in ball games too, man. I ain't watched one lady call you youth, youth rabbit. But boy, I like it. I like it basketball. I get excited. I want to I want to jump up and slam it. And I can do it on a trampoline. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm going to tell you, brother, you listen to me. We're going to a place one day where the Bible says we'll have a brand new body. We'll be able to worship God. They send that old grandma. Oh, listen, everybody listen. That's good. Little running in the back of it. You hear about that story, that old grandma? That old grandma went to church, and every time she went to church, she shouted. Like mama's do at ball games. Grandma went to church one Sunday morning, and the choir got up and said something about Jesus. And when it did, she jumped up and went, Woo! Like the old grandma's used to do. Some of you grandmas here tonight don't do that no more. You got backslid. The kids are praising God and you're home watching soap operas now. But year, years ago, Grandma praised the Lord. And the mute minister was up front and embarrassed him. It embarrassed him. You know there's something wrong with you when people praise the Lord and embarrass you. Somebody shouts and it embarrasses you. So you go to some church and say amen. And everybody in the church will turn around and look. Say, that, my friend, is a messed up church. They're going to be saying amen in heaven. They're going to be saying, help me God in hell. This is Christ's world. We're ever going to live in hell. And the minister looked at his friend. He said, we got to do something. Get her out of here. Get her out of here. And she's, we got doctors and lawyers and big shots. And she's going to fit them. They give a lot of money. So the ushers come down there and say, said, man, you got to calm down. you got to be quiet. She said, hell. She's thinking about getting saved. And they, said, they got her out. One got under one arm. And one got under the other arm. And they just carried her down the middle aisle. I kept her feet just a dangling. Like that right there. And she was going out the door, and somebody heard her still going out the door, and she said, Praise the Lord! She said, When Jesus came into Jerusalem, he came in on one donkey. But she didn't say donkey. And I got two! Yeah. Well, that's what some little churches need, baby. That's what some little churches need. Some of you, God brought you out of a life 
of sin. This time 10 years ago, you was on drugs. Somebody was in a jail. Yeah. Your marriage was broke up. Your life was in a wreck. The Lord picked you up, put you on a solid rock. And once in a while, I mean, people may say, poor old brother Danny, I feel so. Don't feel sorry for me. Lord, have mercy. My girls is all up here singing in the choir tonight. I, my son-in-law jumped the buses on a motorcycle. My mother's sitting here tonight. Say, my sister's here tonight. My brother about that fellow. He said he stayed drunk all the time. And he stayed drunk all the time. And his wife kept telling him, they said, if you don't quit that, you're going to puke your guts out. He said, I'll be all right. She said, if you don't quit it, you're going to puke your guts out one of these days. So one day he was in the back room drunk. And she was in there cutting up a chicken. And she's in the kitchen. She cut this chicken up. Had all the chicken inside, you know, in the sink. And she got the meat and put it in the Put it in the refrigerator, left the guts there in the sink. He comes staggering through the house like that, pull up, pull up right in that sink like a die. She come back in a minute, he's sitting over there just bawling. She looked around, she said, What's wrong with you? He said, Honey, you told me I was going to puke my guts out. You kept telling me I did. But he said, By the grace of God, that big spoon right there, I caught him right down. Shadrach, Meshach, and the bad Negro. Yeah. That's what he calls 
Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. And he had no arms and no legs. He was just a body and a head. And every few days, they'd come in, the nurses would pick him up and turn him over. And brother, I see that man, last time I seen him, probably 20 years ago, he may still be laying over there in the VA hospital tonight. I seen him laying in the little burn centers where their bodies are burned, been down to the hospital down there, been with Salem, and, and many, many, many times, and saw little kids laying there with tubes up their nose and, and hurting and suffering. This world is suffering tonight. A lot of God's people suffer. There's people here tonight that go to bed every night in some kind of pain. Brother, there's people here tonight. I've seen my family. My family's here tonight. My immediate family and some of my cousins and nephews and, 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 and people, nieces and nephews here tonight. Some of you know what our own personal family has been through. From 1988 to 1990, it seems like all hell broke loose on our family. We have a lot of personal problems, as some of you know. It's only the grace of God that's kept our family going. God has by His grace. Yeah. I'm the preacher that ain't even supposed to be. I'm the preacher that's supposed to got knocked out in 1979. And the devil been trying to knock me out since 1979. When New Man of His Church was a year and a half old. And I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm not even supposed to be alive. And if there's one thing I prove tonight, it's if God has a plan for a person's life and he's got his hand on it, they ain't enough. sister got cancer when she was 35 years old and my sister was so healthy she never got sick never got sick run races and marathon she could do anything Sandy could do anything when she got sick the doctor told us said if she makes it three years she'll be alright three years it was back and I don't, I don't want her my family here tonight but God saw fit to let it take her. I saw my mom sit here at night, sit beside her and hold her hand while she sat. And one time Cindy looked at mom and she said, Mom, I hope I never have to go through this again. And mom said, you won't, huh? Amen. She's, she's a whole lot better off than we are. God took her out of this world on the 4th of July 1990. My daddy shook his head, walked out of the house that day, went home, cranked up a lot more, started mowing grass. And I went home, and daddy's laying there. Six months later, he dropped dead with a heart attack. We had all the other personal problems, me and my sister here. And if you live long enough, you're going to have yours. You know why I don't go to heaven? I want to go to heaven tonight because there ain't going to be no such stuff as that. There ain't going to be no disease. There ain't going to be no divorce. There ain't going to be no broken homes. There ain't going to be no broken hearts. You don't have to worry about your kids. Everybody say, I'll see my sister again. She'll be in perfect health. My daddy got saved. Daddy come through the kitchen one morning, had a, bottle, had a bag full of liquor, and set it down on the kitchen table and said, that's it. And he's going street preaching that morning. And now I said, what, daddy? He looked up and he said, I was down on the knees last night in the middle of the night. And he looked up and said, I felt it when it came. And but I'll tell you what, God does something for my daddy. God does something for my sister. We're all going to be together in heaven one of these days. You know why? Heaven's a place where there'll be no suffering, people. You want to get ready tonight. You want to get ready to go to heaven. The hospitals are full of them. The doctor's offices are filled. I'm glad there be no suffering. I'm going to say something else tonight. I'm like that little boy. You know what else is going to be in heaven? You know what's going to be the highlight of heaven? Do you know why I get to go to heaven and you can go?
go to heaven tonight? Did you know that heaven is a place where there'll be no suffering? It's perfect weather. You can eat anything you want, go anywhere you want, and take as much time as you want. Never have any kind of problems or burdens or anything at all. Let's go. Let's go. Man. Because a man loved you enough hey. to shed his blood. Bam. You know why I want to go to heaven? Because Jesus is there. Yeah. Like that man, they said, they said this little boy, said this little boy was born blind, born blind. And they said this, he got about 10 years old, his mom had always told him about things. And this little boy said, uh, they said this great doctor from over in England could perform surgery. And this surgery, in some cases, to go back behind the eyeball and cut, the, cut it and do a surgery and make that little boy see. And she said, oh, honey. We're going to do this surgery. I don't know if it will work or not. And the doctor came and performed the surgery. And he said, the doctor said when he got done, he said, now ma'am, we don't want to blind him. The light to blind him. He's never seen before. He said, mom, he said, no, I want you to put, they got 32 bandages on his eyes. He said, you take off one bandage a day for 30 days. Call me before you take off the last one. I want to be there. So each one day she'd take off a bandage, the next day she'd take off a bandage, the next day she'd take off a bandage, the next day she'd take off a bandage. Ladies and gentlemen, when she got to the last one, she called the doctor the last two, he came over, and she said, I laid him out in the backyard, it was a beautiful day, and the sun was shining, the trees, the birds, and the grass was green. She slowly peeled that last bandage off of that little boy's eyes, he squinted a time or two, looked and squinted a time or two, the light was so bright, and he looked around and he said, Mama, is this heaven? She said, No, son, this is our backyard. I tried to tell you how beautiful it was, but you couldn't see, you were blind. And he looked around and he said, Mama, this is beautiful, this is wonderful. But he said, Mama, I want to see the man that opened my eyes. She took it over and showed you the good doctor. And I'm going to tell you tonight, one of these days, old oh, brother Danny right here is going to breathe my last breath, preach my last sermon, sing my last song. One of these days, it's all going to be out of here. All our burdens and all our troubles and trials are going to be gone. And I'm going to be escorted into the city. I'm going to look around and say, Lord, have mercy. I've never seen nothing like this in my life. And then I'm going to say, somebody show me the man.
me tonight. Love that knows no limits. Love that knows no boundaries. Thank God his love included me. Amen. Amen. Listen to me tonight. Does that touch your heart tonight? You say, preacher, was it that bad? The Bible said his visage was hard more than his. Surely you young people can live for him. To believe it for you. Surely you can get up and go to church on Sunday morning. If God's good enough to give his life for you. And take you to heaven when you leave this world. Surely you can get out of bed and worship him and honor him a little bit. Surely tonight. Surely. Surely. You can walk an aisle tonight and say, Dear God, be merciful to me, sir. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, I want you to come on down here. Come on down here and get saved. Come on. Come on right now. Just come on right now. Just get up and come. Right now. Amen. Just give us one on the left, Steve. Just one. Just one on the left. Just one. There you go. Come on, kids. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Get up. Come on right now. Surely we can live for Jesus after what he's done for us. Get up. Come on, kids. You that come on the buses. You that run the other cars. Come on. Let's get up. Come get saved tonight. Come on. Come on, young people. Come on tonight. We need workers. We need a lot of workers. If God spoke to your heart here tonight, you come tonight. Give your heart to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on. Come on. He was wounded for your transgression. Pray with these kids. Well, somebody pray with every one of them. Come on, kids. Just get up tonight. We need a lot of workers, especially some ladies. For all these girls coming tonight. Thank God. This is an answer to prayer tonight. This is an answer to prayer tonight. You come right now. You come right now. Yes, amen. Thank God. It's amazing tonight. It's amazing that he loved you enough. That he loved you enough to shed his blood for your sins. It's amazing that he cared enough about your soul. That he's loved you enough to die on Calvary for you. You listen to me tonight. He, Jesus died so that you can live. He died so that I can go to heaven. I want everybody here to have somebody to pray with them. We need somebody to pray with every one of these young people. Somebody to pray with every single one of them. Amen. He was me. Every time you disobey your parents, every time you did something wrong, he let them beat him and mock him and scourge him so that you can be saved. Come on, get up.
But we ought to be able to worship the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. That's what God gave your emotions for. Yeah. To worship Him with. Amen. This family, y'all, we're going to pray with you. All right. These are still praying. Brother Randy said they had at least eight get saved tonight from their group. Yeah. We're going to find out who else got saved here tonight. Go ahead and get that one out, Amen. Over there. All right. Lord have mercy. Now see, look. Every kid that sincerely from their heart calls on the Lord Jesus Christ and they're in their heart gets saved. Every one. Every one. And if you're skeptical about it, I'll tell you what Carl Lackey said. That's just going to your church didn't really get saved. <laughs> All right. Let's find out how many got saved here tonight. I want you to, if you just got saved here tonight, you have, you don't get saved by joining a church. You don't get saved by crying. You don't get saved. You get saved by trusting what Jesus Christ did on that cross. You get saved by trusting what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Why don't you look at them girls? They're a whole lot different than they was when they got here a while ago. And for all you that criticized me for that skit a while ago, that's why I did it. So don't get mad at me. Just take it up with the Lord. If I was wrong, you forgive me. Because I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for them girls getting saved. Amen. All right. If you just got saved here tonight, raise your hand. If you just got saved here tonight, raise your hand. Hold them up. Hold them up real high now. One. 11, 7, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 51 that I can see. Amen. 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 That's a good juicy gossip to go spread. spread. Don't call everybody you know and tell them what happened to Christ's life tonight. Every one of them, every one of them that meant business got saved. Every one of them that meant business got saved. Now we don't know who did and who did, but God does. That's 51. We had 18 last night. That's 69. Yeah, I counted them. I don't know. Lord have mercy. We got some people in here to tell what's going on. This is mass confusion. I like it like that. Amen. Okay, that makes sense. Amen. What about that? That's unbelievable. I've never seen that many people get saved one night. Never, ever in my life. Let's give the Lord a big amen out right there. My good friend, Brother Ronnie, one of my favorite singers in the world. You ain't going to hear singing like this on TV. They don't have that kind of talent. I love this man. He's going to sing, I'll see all my friends on Hallelujah Square. What a wonderful time. We'll all have that Hit it, sister. Hit I saw. Right. 
I was down there in revival a few weeks ago, and I'm telling you what that place is popping. It is popping. This is what these young people are starving for. Amen. They've seen enough dead religion and dead churches to make them throw up. The devil's got all the excitement. He's got the rock concert. He's got the dance hall. We ought to be excited about what we've got. Oh, we got free. But please, as you go out tonight, get after all these kids that got say they're just like little baby birds. They need somebody to feed them. They need somebody to talk to them. Get them in church. Get their names. Come, go back and send the bus. Go pick them up. Take them to church. Talk to them. Pray with them. It's like throwing them out there to the wolves. I need you to do me a couple of things and we'll go. We've had a fight this week. You've seen that, that circuit blow or whatever it was a while ago. Brother Randy didn't come in here the other night and set up his sound equipment and blow the whole board. I believe we ought to help him get him another. And I'm asking him tonight, give me, if you'll give me some money, I'm going to give it to him. I ain't getting a penny. I don't get a penny extra for this. I don't take one penny for this. I put money out of my pocket in this. Our church goes in the hole of this. This ain't no money making racket. That's not why we're here. I think I found an easier way to do it than this. That's what I was interested in. We beat our brains out for this. So if I want somebody to say, beat three or four or five people, give me some money, I need $100, I'm going to give it to him, let him buy me a new soundboard. I don't even know what one cost. How much? Five, four, three, six, five hundred, big one. If somebody give him, let's help him out tonight. He gives his time, comes up here, puts up his sound equipment. One of you churches want to help out or something? Let's give him a new soundboard. I love Brother Randy. We couldn't do this without him. Amen, hey, brother. We will have church here in the morning. Todd's going to be jumping tomorrow right after the service. He left his stuff set up. If you think somebody didn't come tonight, go home, call them, tell them to be here in the morning at 10 o'clock. Brother Jerry Pumpkin is going to be preaching. Dr. Frankie Hunt. Where you at, Brother Frankie? Where you at, Brother Frankie? He's in here somewhere. Oh, there you are. He's going to be preaching tomorrow morning. You don't want to miss it. So you got rid of me. They're going to have the good preachers tomorrow. So you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. I mean great preaching. Now we got hamburger plates for $2. Don't go to McDonald's. You get them there for $2. Potato chips and everything. Great potato chips and hamburgers. $2. Fellowship. Lay hands on this place and pray that God would give us this whole fairground. Wouldn't that be a blessing? That would be a blessing. You can pray about that for us. All right. We're going to be dismissed. Everybody stand. Bow your head. Be careful getting out of here. Don't kill somebody. Lord, thank you so much for all you've done for us. Thank you for the wonderful time. Bless the food. Bless our fellowship. Bring us back tomorrow morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Get your shiny light souvenir t-shirts here for $10. If you want to use you that souvenir t-shirt, they're right here for $10. Get the shirts over here.
What's up, man?